Okay folks, about half eleven on the, I think it's the 7th of uh, June 2021. Um, I left Sanford after getting a bus from Western Supermare on the 126. Climbed up round inside the gorge area, not the gorge, the quarry at Sanford. Winding my way round there, it was very, very grey and some awful photos were probably taken there. But it's all done for posterity. Events in the world. Um, a couple of days ago, Prince Harry and his wife Megan had a baby girl they've called Elizabeth. El El Lily, Diana. She weighed seven pound eleven ounces. She was born in America. Just to announce that, and apparently the Queen's very pleased with the names that she, they've chosen for her. Lilibet is what Eliz Queen Elizabeth I was called as a child a lot. But she will be called Lily. Lily, it's a Lilibet, Lily, Diana, Mountbatten, Windsor. That's her full name for now. She might get given other names. They do in the royal family, have loads of them. And they don't always use their first name either, I've noticed that. Right, now anyway, they might have been called Henry, but they'll end up being called George if they become king or something like that, you know. But I reckon William will keep his original name when he becomes king, like Charles will. Anyway, I've climbed up from Dolbury Hamlet, up towards the... Roebarrow Do Dolberry Hillfort, which I've done many times now over the last 10, 12 years. Yeah, I was in my late 50s before I discovered this place. Never knew it existed. Too busy looking out of a pub window, working or looking after the kids. So, Anyway, it don't matter. I had some brilliant conversations with friends. Flat Earth Society, all sorts of things we talked about. Um, I also worked for 40 years and brought up four children, mainly on my own. Hard work, it's hard work. But before, uh, when they were young, I used to swim, run marathons, take them running, take them swimming. We always had a nice summer holiday when they were small children. And, but life can be cruel. Life changes things. Now I don't normally walk right up the middle. I don't normally walk right up. I either go round that way, which I did last time, or this way. So I'm going to walk round the edge. I often, I do well sometimes come down through the middle, but um, this is Dolbury and Rowbarrow Iron Age Hill for everyone. This is their cleared space. And it can be seen quite clearly the ramparts that would once would have had wooden fencing on them much higher in the back two or three thousand years ago. There's a lot of hill forts in Somerset. Lots of tribes and they all used to fight each other. And they used to have these big, use the geology as well. And uh, they'd have all their homes and stalls and all sorts of things here. The Romans weren't bothered so much here because it was too far from the sea, I think, and no river. They would have been aware of it though, and they might have had a small encampment up here. I don't know. I'd have to look into the depth. Sometimes I do, and then I forget what I've what I've read. I'm terrible at like that, but I do make a note of it. I do make a note because sometimes when I'm doing the video, I will make sure I've got some updated information about a place so that I can add little captions. Oh look, little bunny. So I can add some captions. Anyway, I'm having a great walk. Um, the 2% rain, we had like a, 
a little tiny, tiny bit. It didn't rain, it was like a mist. Then it lifted, but it could come again. Um, I was here a couple of months ago. As soon as we were allowed back on the buses properly, I got on the 126 and I came and did a different walk before all the plants were out. And I went up through the, the valley and I weaved in and out of the woods and then I headed for Cheddar. Piney Slights and Cheddar. Now today, plan A is to go right up to the top of the hill fort, down the other side, weave back into the wood and then head back down the West Mendip Way area to um, Shipham, which is over there somewhere. And uh, then from Shipham, go across country down to Winscombe, where I will pick up the 126 to take me back to Western. Now, I'm not rushing. I'm enjoying the walk. I've taken my jumper off, but it's a bit nippy up here. Over there we got Banwell Woods, Banwell Hill Fort, Crooks Peak, and I've walked all these hills. Down there there's a track that takes you all the way down a little, I'll link up with it later when I get near those woods, those tall pine trees. I'll link up with it later. Sometimes I walk that route. There's one that follows a stream going that way which I follow, or that, that one over there. And there's one that goes up further up. Now you do get cows in here. There is quite a big herd of brown or black cows. I can't remember which. But uh, I haven't heard of anyone getting injured. They might not be out now. This is the rampart I'm walking on, on the south side. And it goes all the way round. And then up there, where what I call a, the bosom of the hill for it, there's like a little V. That's like a main entrance area to the fort. And there is some Roman remains up there, I believe. So what I'm saying, that, that knowledge just came to my mind. What I'm saying, the Romans would have been aware of this hill fort. And they could have had a, a bit of an encampment here because it gave brilliant commanding views, as you can see but it's a long way from the sea, a long way from a main river. Right, now, about an hour or so ago, I'm just gonna zoom into a track I was on, passing the camp. There's a camp, an adventurous camp there. See that track there? I didn't walk on that one. I went through the wood there through another track, but I, I passed very close to the, that um, campsite. Private campsite for uh, people who want to camp there. Someone's been here, look, they've left their banana skin. So I was right over there. Now it looks a long way off, doesn't it? But it's been, it's great. I mean, I love this walk. I know this area now. And I'm walking on the, on the ramparts. Hump. Bit bumpy ramparts. I mean, you can walk down lower. It might be easier to walk down here. The crows are out. They followed me from Weston. No, they haven't. I've got some rooks, crows, ravens that come to my window for food. And I seem to bump into them. I, I love them. But I'm not very happy with them at the moment because they're waking me up at half four, five o'clock in the morning on my windowsill, making the loudest noise you could ever imagine. So I'm not very happy with that. I don't know what to do. I tell them to shut up and they will for a while. Now this would have been full of people yesterday over the half term. I always wait so it's quiet. So I like to do my videos. It's difficult to video when there's lots of people about. Now down there, just down there, there's a church. 
Robero Church. I haven't been in that one. I say this every time, but I will one day find out when it's open and I will deliberately get there. So I want to go inside it because a cousin Barbara in Canada, who's passed now last year and a half, she um, had family from Somerset, which I found for her. She wasn't aware of it till we started doing our tree. And um, basically, she might have people mentioned inside that church. Now, there was some of her family that might have been a bit wary of that, but I, I've done so much work and some people do mess with their names a bit. They might remove an A or put, replace it with an E or move the L around. Um, and I know that's what happened with one of her great grandparents. When they wanted to emigrate to Canada, they, he slightly moved his name around. Now, what happened, his first wife, Betty, she died. She wasn't that old. He married very quickly. I think he must have been having an affair. Um, he married very quickly with a slightly different name, but all the other details were the same. Birth date, where he was born, all that, you know, parents. So I knew who he was. And uh, he had a daughter with his first wife that went with him to Canada. So everything fitted in round her as well. And um, anyway, what I'm saying is she's got a large history of family from this area. A large history, lots and lots of people. And I've traced a lot of it and other people have done their trees here. And that church and the one in Shipham, St. Leonard's, also has graves of that belong to my cousin Barbara. Now they're her relations, her Somerset family are nothing to do with me. Oh look, Copac. Copac, they're here. Now her family They come from um, someone else who married a hell. It could have it, it. I don't think it was a Fletcher. It was. It was from a Fletcher. It was from a Fletcher. A Fletcher married somebody, and then someone married somebody else. So there might be some sort of connection. But anyway. Um, i done a lot of work on that, but I know some of her family were a bit concerned about the, the name irregularity. But what they didn't seem to realise is if they looked at the births. There was also another thing where it was hardly discernible the name of the woman who was supposed to have been his first wife. It was like Elizabeth Stearns or something. It was um, a very weird thing that has been put down. I just wondered about his first wife, what happened to her really, you know what I mean? So I went on to get her death certificate. I did want to get her death certificate because I'd like to know how she died. I know where her grave is and she definitely married him so but some people like to be dead on but it wasn't in those days there was a lot of errors in the early days with census information and people juggling their names about he might have wanted a clean break it happened to Zara's one of her great great grandfathers from Cornwall when he moved to Cornwall to Devon his name was Barbary, and he put an E in it. Um, he put an E in there, which no one else has ever done. And he'd fallen out with his family, and he moved to Ifrakum. 
but uh, once again, we birth dates, censuses showed who he was. <laughs>